The pageant started, uh, really started five years ago, and I stopped here in PEI, in New Glasgow, where my sister had just opened a restaurant, and I'm from PEI, so I often come back here in the summer. And she and I were standing on the lawn of the restaurant looking at this river. So I asked, well, why has it gotten so much shallower? And that progressed into a uh, discussion about the environmental factors that have made the rivers, to some degree, unhealthier. I thought, wow, I'd love to do a, a kind of community theater pageant performance uh, that in some way addressed that subject. Our principle thus far has been anyone who wants to be involved can be. And so far we have not uh, refused anyone. I'm in the pageant and I'm the star of the show. Well, not quite, but... <laughs> we fish eels and oysters and other things in the rivers and estuaries and the water quality has been getting worse and worse. The farmers don't think it's their fault. The fishermen don't think well, it's, it's not their the fault. Well, the fishermen's fault. It's everybody's fault, though. It's right? the Everyone's fault. involved. Everyone's involved. The River Clyde pageant really brings forward some of the problems that people don't know about. It helps them think about it more. It's hard to change opinions, especially in a small place like this. No one wants to upset anyone. Sometimes it has to be done. The situation with the right whales in the Gulf of St. Lawrence has been a particularly contentious one because the right whales that are very close to becoming extinct have been getting entangled in fishing gear, I think especially crab gear. When right whales are seen in the area or one becomes entangled, they, there's a moratorium on fishing in that area, which of course affects the livelihood of all those fishermen. Because of right whales, there's not letting some lobster fishermen of fish where they're supposed to fish. It's an endangered species. Yeah. So the way they need protection. Yeah. The lobster fishermen fish in shallow water where the whales don't go. It just seems they close areas that shouldn't be closed. The, the idea of making this massive whale puppet um, and carrying it in the pageant, uh, which is quite a labor, felt like a appropriate uh, thing to try and do this year. They seem like a, a kind of um, a particularly potent uh, example of, of the choice we have about how we want to live, what we want the world to look like in 10 years or 20 years or 50 years. Do we want to live in a world where whales uh, only exist in our imagination? And arguably once, you know, the last generation that had ever seen a whale is gone, then they'll only exist as, you know, videos on YouTube or images in books? Or do we want to live in a world where they, can we continue to coexist? With this question or any significant question in life, people need to feel they have a choice. So I'm interested in making art that doesn't, um, is not didactic and is not um, telling people how to think, but the fact is we don't know what will happen in the end and there are certain kinds of activities we, we have to do with, a, with a, an element of faith that they're worth doing even if they don't turn out, quote, perfectly. We don't know what will happen in the end relates to so many aspects of production and also to what it's like to attempt to bring about change, that you are trying to imagine a different way of living which may seem completely idealistic but you continue anyway because you think that's a better way of being than giving up. <laughs>